Right. You have the number? Yeah. No. Who's gonna who's gonna email you? Anybody can. What? So let's warm it up, Chris, because we're about to. Chris? Warm it up, Chris. Who's Chris? Chris Cross makes you want to jump, Chris? jump. So the nice thing is, is that this particular one is pre-solved for one variable for us. So we just have to uh, stick it up into the other equation. So then that would become x squared plus 2x minus 10 minus 25. Here. So then that becomes x squared plus 4x squared minus 40x plus 100 and minus and equaling 0. A little confusing. You can ask it, it's okay. Um, I thought you just do negative 10 squared. But see, because the net 2x minus 10 quantity squared, that one, remember? 2x minus 10 squared is really 2x minus 10 times 2x minus 10. Right? So then that's 4x squared. That's minus 20x. That's minus 20x. And that's plus 100. Come on, we get 4x squared minus 40x plus 100. This simplifies then to be 5x squared minus 40x plus 75. All of them can be divided by 5. Two numbers that multiply together to be negative, excuse me, multiply together to be positive 15 can add together to be negative 8. And this becomes three, and this becomes five. So we have two potential intersection points. Now we plug those back into either one of the original equations. I'm going to choose to plug them into this one. If I go x equals 3, then that would be y equals 2 times 3 minus 10. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 10 is negative 4. Then I've got to plug in x equals 5, 2 times 5. 10 minus 10 is 0. So this top one gets me the point 3 comma negative 4. This bottom one gets me the point 5 comma 0. Checking them back in our original, both of our original equations, 3 squared is 9. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. 9 plus 16 is 25. Minus 25 is 0, and 0 is equal to 0. Negative 4 is negative 4. 2 times 3 
is 6 minus 10 is negative 4. Checks out the math. 5 squared is 25. 0 squared is 0. 25 plus 0 minus 25 is 0. 0 is 0. 2 times 5 is 10. Minus 10 is 0. Checks out both of those. So these two intersection points are my Questions, comments, concerns, clarification. Yes, so is this all we're going to be doing like when we get college questions? We're not going to have to apply it to anything and put it into anything and graph it or anything like that? We're just going to solve, we'll solve it. it for the intersection. Okay. Oh, wait, is that an intersection? It's uh -huh. not related to this stuff. It's related to math, but it's not related to this. Do like 80 questions on the quiz? All right. So. Substitution is great and everything for solving for these intersection points. The downfall is, is that we're going to need a different way because if we get in a case like this where we've got an ellipse and a hyperbola and they're intersecting, or if we had an ellipse and a circle, or if we had a circle and a hyperbola where we have multiple squared terms when one of them's not a line basically is what we need to, to figure out. Okay? And so for that, we have elimination. Now, substitution, the setup for substitution in a quadratic system is the same as the setup for substitution in a linear system. Likewise, it's the same thing in terms of elimination. The setup is very much the same. So the first thing that I had you guys do way back in early February, late January, was line up the equations, okay? Line them up so that all of your terms are vertically aligned, okay? So in this particular case, that would look like we keep 9x squared, we can keep y squared there, we can keep negative 90x there, we can keep 216 there, equals and zero, equal all right there. Bottom equation, I'd have x squared there, I'd have minus y squared there, and I'd have negative 16 equals zero way over there. So that everything's, excuse me, everything is aligned vertically. Next, step two says we're going to set up the elimination, meaning we want to eliminate one of our squared terms. Doesn't matter which one, so we need the same coefficient on those two squared terms, just opposite signs, one positive and one negative. We have that already given to us in this particular problem with the y squared. So we don't have to do that in this problem. In another problem, you might have to multiply one or both equations by a certain number. Okay. Once that is done, then you combine the equations with addition. So we're going to add the equations, and that should eliminate one of the squared terms. Now, it might work out where it eliminates both of the squared terms. Okay? That can happen, and that's awesome. That helps out a lot. Okay? So, we have that. Okay? In this particular case, the y squared is eliminated, and we're left with 10x squared minus 90x plus 200 equals 0. Now, we have a single variable equation that we can solve, either by quadratic formula, by factoring, by uh, completing the square, by multiple different methods. Okay. 
So we're going to solve that particular equation. Now the first thing that I noticed about this equation is that they can all be divisible by 10. So let's get rid of the 10. So then we can go x squared minus 9x plus 20 equals 0. Factorable? Yeah. Two numbers that multiply together to be positive 20 and add to be negative 9. Negative 4 and negative 5. So that gives me 4 and 5 as my x value. Agree? Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to find the point. Whoa, it has, you know. We're going to find the points by plugging into one of the two equations. Doesn't matter which one. I would probably choose in this particular case, I would choose this bottom one because it's an easier input. And x equals 4. And that's going to be 4 squared minus y squared minus 16 equals 0. 16 y squared minus 16 equals 0. Negative y squared equals 0. y squared equals 0. So y is going to be 0. So that particular point would be the point 4, 0. Checking it on both equations quickly. 4 squared is 16 times 9 is 144. 0 squared is 0. 90 times 4 is 360 plus 216, hopefully that equals 0. Uh, 144 plus 216 is 60, 360. Yep, so that one works out. Checks out there. 16 minus 0 minus 16, that is also 0. 4 comma 0 checks out in both equations. So that is for sure an intersection. Okay. Then we have to check out x equals 5. Again, I would plug it into that bottom equation. 5 squared minus y squared minus 16 equals 0. So that's 25 minus y squared minus 16 equals 0. So that's 9 minus y squared equals 0. So that's 9 as y squared. And if I square root both sides, I get plus or minus 3 is y. So that one would actually produce two points. It would produce 5, 3, and it would produce 5, negative 3 as potential points there. Checking those two, then, 5 squared is 25. 25 times 9 is 225. 3 squared is 9. 90 times 5 is 450 plus 216. Hopefully that equals 0. 225 plus 216 is 241 plus 9 is 4, excuse me, 441 plus 9 is 450 minus 450 is 0. 
5 squared is 25, 3 squared is 9, 25 minus 9 minus 16 is 0. So 5 comma 3 works out. And since the only y in either equation is a y squared, negative 3 would also work out. No need to test those. So we get three points there for this one. Okay. Which is okay because we've got an ellipse as our first equation and a hyperbola as a second equation. So those could meet it up to four points. Questions, comments, concerns, clarification. Fantastic. Try this one on your own. All can be divided by two. Two numbers are multiplied together to be positive 15 and add to be negative 8 and negative 3 and negative 5. Going to give me three and five as my two possible x values. So if I do the x equals three first, give me three squared. Y squared minus 9, 0. Zero for Y. So X equals 5 minus 5 squared. Zero, five, sixteen, so my three possible answers are three comma zero, five comma four, and five comma negative three. If I check three comma zero, I've got nine plus zero minus forty-eight plus thirty-nine. Nine minus forty-eight is negative thirty-nine plus thirty-nine is zero. Checks so, out. I got 9 minus 0 minus 9, that 0 checks out. So that one works out. If I do 5 comma the 4s, then I got 25 plus 16 minus 80 plus 39 would be 41 minus 80 is negative 39 plus 39. Zero. And then I have 25 minus 16 minus 9. That works out as zero also. So 
all three of them work out. All three of them are your answers. Questions, comments, concerns, clarifications. So thinking about the rest of this week, you have the yellow uh, final review packet at some point in time, somewhere probably, at Homer's, hopefully you've printed one out by now, that you can be working on. Good information in there about different things. Okay? Not going to collect it, but very important for you to know what's in here because that's going to directly correlate to what's on your test. Your test is going to be in two parts. The first part is multiple choice fill in the blank type one on its learning. Okay? I have made a change to that in that it needs to be done Friday. You need to take that final sometime between midnight Friday morning and 11.59 p.m. Friday night. It needs to be taken on Friday. Okay? Okay? needs to be done on Friday. Friday is going to be our finals day for part one. Part two is going to be written and on Monday. Okay? Monday in class will be part two. You guys, because you're in person, you'll do it on paper and pencil. At home, we'll have a different way, but they'll take roughly the same test, just on, they'll have to submit it virtually. Okay? Questions about the final? Five questions, Five questions on the written part, and if memory serves me right, somewhere in the 10 to 15 on the, um, multiple choice part. Yay, okay. yeah. It shouldn't take you, the multiple choice part shouldn't take you longer than an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That's for leaving. Yeah. I don't remember the, I'll look, I'll look and get the exact number. Actually, I think I have it right here. It is 14, sorry, there's 14 questions on the multiple. Oh, no, my, that's that's the pre-calculus one. Thirteen questions. Um, Thirteen advice. The review packet as like a reference or whatever, or no? I would prefer that you use one page of notes, okay. you know, on your own, but you're on your honor on that one because it's going to be taken on Friday, and I won't be able oh, to police it. Well, I mean, like, what about the written one? In the written one, you get, you'll get, you'll get a calculator. And one page of notes. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? <laughs>